Hey, what's good with you, baby? It's your girl, Mahogany. And listen, episode four, this is the last one of season one. But do not get twisted. It's about to go down. I say the best for last because this young man not only is from the seaport, but he reps his city to the fullest. He's been everywhere around the world in the music industry. He won a lot of things. And now he's back in the city to show love to those who are up and coming. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride because he's about to bring you some straight flavor. I'm talking about none other than Savannah's own Clay James. That's right, y'all. You heard it here first. We're going to talk about where he's been, what he's doing, and what he's bringing back to the city in a couple of months to make sure that he puts other artists on. That's what I'm talking about. Each one, teach one, baby. Get ready, because I'm about to bring you a whole new flavor with Mr. Clay James. For me, ain't been no crystal stair. I'm a little black girl, born and raised in Savannah, Georgia, out of a small community called Woodville. I grew up on a half-paved, half-dirt road, but I always had big dreams. I worked hard and made it into the entertainment industry. From the late 90s to now, I have been in the entertainment industry for years, doing everything from choreography, modeling, gracing the covers of magazines, and being a number one radio personality. And then something amazing happened. I was chosen out of hundreds of applicants to stand on the big red carpet and be a TEDx speaker. I couldn't believe it. I remember watching Bill Gates' TEDx talk when I was a young girl living in Fraser Holmes Projects. Who knew that one day that would be me? Through that process, Wesley, the little girl off that half-paved, half-dirt road, met Lady Mahogany for the first time and they realized they were stronger together than apart. Ready to flex my mind and my muscles, I found yoga. Or better yet, yoga found me, and my true journey began. Yoga opened up doors to my mind, body, and my soul. After 10 years in the radio industry, it was time to leave and take my dreams to the next level. I rediscovered my true love, my first passion of writing, producing, and being the voice. So now your girl is back on a whole new level and platform. Buckle up, sit back, and hold on tight because I'm about to bring you a whole new flavor. Hey, what's good with you, baby? It's your girl, Lady Mahogany, here with episode four of Flavor. Now listen, you do not definitely want to miss this episode to call your friends tell them up right now to tune in to flavor tv because it's about to go down i got one of the flyest brothers on the music scene right now fresh off of flight atl's finest sav rays i'm telling you it's straight bananas it's none other than mr clay james Same what's going on with you i'm all right now I'm listen right. now listen i like your little stilo here you know what i mean i had to bring out my little brim because sure. i knew you was coming with the flavor for sure yeah for sure. I, 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 i'm gonna do it I know how you gonna do it. Listen, I love your style. I love your ambition. I, I love the fact that uh, you, you're so down to earth. And I just wanted people to kind of uh, know a little bit more about you and how they can find you, uh, listen to more of your music, all of those different things. So first, foremost, like I said, Savannah Bread. Like, tell everybody where you're from. Um, well, I used to stay off 37th and Terry Street. Yeah. That's where I stayed at first when, uh, when my mama moved back from Atlanta. My mama was from Savannah, went to Savannah State, went to Windsor Forest, and then she moved to Atlanta, met my pops. They had me. Then a situation happened with my daddy. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? He be on some gangster type junk. You are living. Me. So you know. she moved back down to Savannah, and then we ended up staying off 37 Fintera Street. Then we moved to Cloverdale, right okay. around the corner from my grandma. My grandma stayed in Cloverdale for about 40 years. You know wow. what I'm saying? So we moved right around the corner from her. I was in Cloverdale. I went to Hodge Elementary. I went to Duran Middle School and I went to Beach. Okay. My last year of Beach, I ended up transferring back up to the Atlanta area and finishing high school at um, McKeesha High School in Powder Springs. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's like not too far from Marietta. Exactly. So I was up there, then I ended up graduating. I started going to Georgia State. Um, I was on the scene, Georgia State. I was a party promoter. I was in like all the student organizations, NAACP, right. Black Student Alliance, all that. Right. Because truth be told, I was trying to get seen 
by the Kappas. There you, you know go. What I'm saying? So I was like, I knew if I ended up placing Kappa, it was going to open up a whole bunch of other doors to exactly. stuff I was trying to do, just simply on some networking type junk. Exactly. So when I did that, um, I ended up crossing, then I really became like even bigger on campus as far as my reach. So that's when one of my frat brothers was like, man, you know what? You should start rapping. Yeah. So he, uh, he picked me up one day and uh, he took me to the studio. I made my first song. That song, I ended up, since I was throwing the parties, I gave it to Jay Mix. From okay. Hot 107.9. Yeah. So he put the song on the radio for me or whatever. And um, it was on a show called Battlegrounds. So it was a competition. So the song won so many times that it had to get retired off the air. Oh, wow. So I was the retired Battleground champ. Once that happened, I recorded my next project. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, everything else just started moving fast. Moving from there. Yeah. So this is the thing. Savannah Bread yeah. um, went back up to ATL, went to school. Pledge Kappa, yeah. uh, jumped on hot. What is a hot one? Hot one seven nine. Hot one oh seven nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dropped your music off. It started being in rotation. Next thing you know, everybody's listening to you, and then you're in the music industry full fledged. Now, of course, people would like to think, yeah. "Oh man, you got on like you don't made it." Nah, nah, I'm quite sure with some things in between that. So tell people about that transition from just being an average college student to actually now being someone who is uh, trying to break into the music industry. What are some of the things that you had to deal with just as far as trying to get on? What did that look like? Um, you know, you're going to have people that don't support you because you're not a big name. Right. So it's hard to get support. It's hard to get support from your hometown. It's hard right. to get support from your new town. That's right. I had just moved to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So it's like you just got to work extra hard. Even if somebody don't like you as a person, don't like your style, don't like the way you dress, don't like your music, one thing that's consistent that everybody going to rock with is work ethic. That's what they you know go. what I'm saying? People going to always, if you stay in folks' face, uh, if you be consistent with something, just out of respect for the work, you know what I'm saying? You're going to gain fans like that. Exactly. And then while you're doing this, while you're gaining your fans, it's important to hone in on your craft. Because now that you got some people's attention, what they're going to do, they're going to become your street team. That's right. They're going to tell other people about you. So you need to make sure your product good. And then once you start getting that bubbling, that's going to open up other doors. For me, when I started buzzing, it trickled down back to Savannah. Okay. And that's how Big Boy ended up finding out about me. Right. And that was like my first major industry co-sign because Big Boy got family in Cloverdale. Exactly. So his aunt, his uncle was like, yo, it's a kid, you know what I'm saying, from Savannah up there. Kind of remind us of how y'all kicking it. Right. You know what I'm saying? You should check him out. Right. So it was them. And then somehow somebody in L.A. told Shy Money XL, um, from, he used to be the vice president of G-Unit. Right. They told him about me, and he called Big Boy. So once that happened, um, Big Boy kind of took me under his wing, and we became friends or whatever. Once Big Boy gave me that cosign, that's when everybody wanted to come on there. One of the things, one of the things I want to uh, talk about is uh, what you said, which was which was so big. You said, you know, it was hard to get love from where you was from, and it was hard to get love where you was going because you know it's crazy like that sometimes. You, you know, you were born and raised in Savannah, and you would think that people would like be all over you, supporting you, pushing your stuff, and all of this, but. Sometimes when people can see you, they can put their hands on you. Yeah. They're like, oh, that's just clay. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's just clay. Yeah. They, don't, they don't value it. But then when you go someplace else, then also people are like, I don't know who you are. You know? So it, it's, it's a really big fight, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I hear people say, older people say, is that uh, support will come from unfamiliar faces. It won't come from familiar faces. And, and, and that's facts. It's horrible, but it's actually facts. But like you said, your work ethic, it supersedes all of that. Old or new, you know, a new place or an old place, your work ethic is the thing that superseded all of those things because they was like, yo, this kid is grinding. Like, he's really doing this thing. So, all right, now you sign with Big Boy. You know, he put the cosign on there yeah, for you. Cosign. I ain't right. gonna sign. Not yeah. sign, but yeah. he put the cosign on there for you. So now that he put the cosign on there for you, he said, listen, this is a guy who actually has talent. I got him in the studio with me, you know, yeah. helping him with his craft. At that point, everything took off. So tell me, like, what else did you have going on? Like, was it that time for you to start promoting yourself? Uh, what I did was, since I knew that Big Boy had shined that light on me, I worked on my lyrics, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to make sure that I stood for something, like how they did back in the day. I wanted to make sure I stood for content 
lyrics, you know what I'm saying, actually having a message, not right. just being too much of, you know, talking slick. Right. Anybody can jump on a record and talk slick, but right. is you touching somebody emotionally. Exactly. I wanted to make sure I touch people's heart right. in between them slick lines. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I did that, and, and then what I also did, I started traveling more. Okay. I started going to South by Southwest in Austin, Texas. Okay. You know, that's where all the independent artists in the country go every year. You know what I'm saying? If you want to have a fighting chance in the game, you got to be in Austin, Texas, because you're going to see where you rank amongst everybody. Right. Because you got the top artists from L.A., New York, Miami, hey, hey, uh, Nome, uh, Omaha, Nebraska. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. every top artist is going to go to South by Southwest and touch them stages and right. network. Right. So it's a good way to see where you stand, and it's a good way to network and meet people in all these cities because, let's say when you start buzzing as, a, as an independent artist or a signed artist, you don't need to go to these cities, especially not a place like, let's say, Detroit. Right. And you don't know nobody you can check in with. Exactly. Because if you wear jewelry or, you know what I'm saying, you fly, you got something going on, you get into the money, you'll become food out there. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? If you don't feed your wolves, you get on the menu. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Period. So, you know, you got to make sure you're building these bridges and messing with the people in the hood out there in these places you're going. So... You know, you'll be safe. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So And one um, of the things, one of the things I like that you said, you're keeping it real right now, you're keeping it real funky. You know what I mean? <laughs> because like you said, if you don't feed your wolves, then you become lunch. Yeah. I tell anybody, like, oh, if you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. Nah. If you can make it in Savannah, you can make it anywhere. Straight it, up. It, it's battleground. It teaches you. I go to New York, Brooklyn, Harlem, it don't matter, and I walk. And I'm not worried because I know what cloth I'm cut from. Straight you up. have to feed your wolves, meaning you have to go into these cities and let people know you there. So that if anything happens, you protect it. Straight you know? Up. And, up. and that's another part of the industry that people don't see. You know, traveling can be dangerous to anybody, but especially yeah. if somebody, you know, see you dressed like this, they like, you might be the next come up. You know, so it's important. These jewels that you're dropping right now are definitely things that are important for the young people who are watching this, who want to get on, and they think, well, man, I'm the baddest in my city. Nah. It's Go gangsters everywhere. Everywhere, right? It's gangsters everywhere. It's gangsters in Africa. You feel you know me? You feel me? It's gangsters everywhere. Everywhere. So when you, when you went to South by uh, Southwest, like at that point, what did that look like? Like when you stepped out and you see all of these people and everybody hungry. Like everybody. It was inspiring, but it also let me know in particular the type of talent I had. Because I never did a show and I wasn't the best. You know what I'm saying? So it was kind of like, I tell people South by Southwest is the playoffs. It's the Sweet 16. There you go. You know what I'm saying? Everybody hungry. Everybody trying to be a top ranked team in the nation. Everybody trying to win. Right. You know what I'm saying? And everybody is coming with their best. You know, people play their best in the Sweet 16. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? So. The fact that I was going in and I was looking like, you know, I got a different style than everybody, I got different music, I'm getting different reactions out of everybody. Right. I got a chance in music. Exactly. This is all the top people in the country. Right. And you, you gotta you gotta put yourself out there and take that risk to really know how you're gonna fare amongst your competition. Exactly. So that's what I use South by Southwest for. That's what's up. And one of the things that I think is very important about what you're saying right now is you stepped out. You know, I tell people all the time, people go love you. You know, if you ask your mama how you sound, she will always tell you you sound good, baby. Yeah. You know? But if you go out on the stage and you actually do a showcase, everybody's not going to feel you. Like, you need that rejection. You need somebody to boo you. You need somebody to tell you that you're not the hardest thing on the block. You know? Yeah. Um, that is what helps you to hone your craft and, like, really get into it, you know, and focus on your art form and what it is that you're presenting. Okay, so you do South by West, um, South by Southwest, South by Southwest, yeah. and then at that point, now you're moving on to another arena. You've actually practiced on your lyrics and all of those other things. Like, now what's that next step? What did that look like for you? So actually, um, while I was networking at South by, at one of the South by Southwest I went to, I met some people that was affiliated with Snoop. So, and I didn't even know they was affiliated with Bro. Like, we clicked. We just, they like me, I like them, so we start kicking it the whole week for the festival. Then they was like, man, you know what, man? We're going to get you some help, man. Like, they was like, Snoop looking for some new people to push. We're going to give them your music. And I didn't think it was real at first. Right. I'm like, whatever. Right. And then when I got back to Atlanta, a week later, they called me. They was like, yeah, we put your name in there. You know what I'm saying? So, like, a couple days went by. I heard from Snoop a and R, which is also one of his best friends. And he told me to send him music. Send the music, 
mm, maybe like a week later, that's when Dog started rocking with me. Wow. And, um, you know, I was, I was up under him for a couple of years, getting mentored, you know what I'm saying? Honing your crap. Had a little situation or whatever, and... It was dope. I learned a lot. I learned exactly. how to hustle. Exactly. Master P taught Dog how to hustle. All and he right. taught me how to hustle. You know what I'm I saying? I like that. So I, I learned how to hustle and I just tried to soak up as much game as possible because I knew it wasn't going to last forever. Exactly. Like, it, it, it wasn't meant to. Right. So I but took was, that game but and it just good. went independent. Exactly. But it was good in, in, in that moment. And that's one of the things I think that is so important that people need to realize is you didn't get caught up in the emotion of it. It's business. Yeah. Like you said, you were like, it wasn't supposed to last forever. Yeah. But I learned a lot. I gained a lot. You know what I'm saying? Where we come from, even Swap ain't never been no swindle. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, I learned a lot. I appreciate it. And now it's time for me to move on. So at that point, you moved on and now you're independent. Now, people think when you're independent, you just selling tracks out of the back of your Honda Civic. You know what I mean? Yeah. Back in 92, maybe. Right. But yeah. But now, in the day and age of Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you know, um, even for, uh, the fact that you're able to push yourself out there for people to visually see you, to hear your audio, like, it's too easy now. I tell people, if you want to be in the industry, it's too many avenues for you not to be in the in industry. Like, you got to push yourself. So, now that you're independent, what does that look like? To be quite honest, even when I was dealing with with dog, I still felt like I was independent. You know what right. I'm saying? I, I was handling all my own affairs. I would just tell them what I had going on right. and they support me. Right. They wasn't really setting nothing up for me or nothing like that. Right. Like I, I still had to, I never had a manager. Right. You know what I'm saying? I never really had a team outside of my homeboys. Right. Like my producer, my DJ, DJ Iceberg, Mazo, right. my right hand man, a pimp named Sweet Tooth, right. and my engineer, Entree about right. you know what I'm saying? Like that's my team, right? My team of entertainment, like that's you know what that's what it is. So I never really been under that type of umbrella and had that type of support. So if you ask me, I always been independent. Exactly. So me going completely under, independent and not being up under the doggy style umbrella, right? I was already bred for that. So um, it's 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 a little different, you know what I'm saying? I used to be able to. Uh, make certain phone calls and you know be able to say yeah I'm a I'm Snoop Dogg artist some doggy style whoop de whoop and right. it's an instant yes right but see now that it's I'm Clay James I'm a I'm a rapper from Savannah exactly. it's a little harder right but you know but once they do their background check once they uh, listen to the product right. I still get in the dope exactly it's just a couple more conversations than that instant yes exactly you know what I'm saying and, and that's okay because like I said you you willing to work harder. Exactly. That's what it's about. Exactly. All right, y'all. We're going to be back in just a second. We're going to talk about Mr. Clay James being in the industry and all the things that he has going on right now and how you all can stay in contact and follow him. Because I'm telling you, I follow this guy on Instagram. His stuff is bananas. <laughs> all right. We'll be back in just one second. So. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Ha, you're far too kind. All right, you all, we're back here with the artist Clay James talking about all of the amazing things that he has going on, being in the industry and being independent. So now I want you to tell me what have you had going on as far as tours because I'm following your Instagram and it is crazy. Like I see you here, here, here. Like what you got going on? Um, I was actually on the Beats and Beers tour. Beats and Beers is um, an organization that was put together from Brandon Corder. He's out of Flint, Michigan, and uh, he's a producer actually. And he took it. It's a uh, he took it. Started doing shows in each city. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Having the whoever the main independent popping artist in that city, he has them headline. Uh, he does he he does stuff where he give back the community. He right. does giveaways. He you know what I'm saying? He speaks on panels. He he he's a stand up guy. Wow. So I found out about him through Big Crit. Because okay. Crick, one of my partners, too. Right. So, um, you know, it was like for years I was trying to get in contact with him. And it was like I couldn't get none of my emails through. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Couldn't get, couldn't get in contact. For years. Woo -woo. Yeah. And then what so happened, one of my frat bros, that's his cousin. So when I saw my frat bro 
post the flyer and say he was hosting a concert, mm-hmm. I pulled up on him. Oh, you know what I'm saying? That's how you got to do it. So then we built our own relationship. Okay. And uh, ever since then, we like we partners. I'm actually a brand ambassador this year for the company. You know wow. what I'm saying? So I'm gonna be like on the in the e-board meetings and all type of stuff on all the shows. I love it. You know what I'm saying? All that. Like I went from them not paying attention to me four or five years ago to right. being a brand ambassador. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just from being persistent. Right. And um, so I toured with them. We went to, we did Atlanta, we did LA, we did Houston. Um, and we got Flint, Michigan coming up on February 2nd. That's going to be bananas. And while they the headliner. You what? Know what I'm so yeah, that's so gonna that's be crazy. So listen, one of the things that I love is the fact that you were talking about your persistence. You know, you gotta make opportunities. You gotta create opportunities. You didn't sit back and wait. You didn't continue for four or five years just sending emails. First off, you had a plan when you were younger in college. I'm about to join this fraternity because I know if I join this fraternity, my network and X, Y, and Z, like, it's about to start popping. Okay. So you join a fraternity. Now, four or five years later, you've been trying to get in contact with these people. You haven't been able to get in contact with them. Next thing you know, he's like, oh, your frat bro. That's so-and-so cousin. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, let's make that work. Yeah. Now, you popped up. I tell people all the time, if I'm on Instagram and I tell you where I'm going to be at, just pop up. Yeah. You got to be persistent and consistent. People will notice your work ethic. So I like the fact that you went from four or five years ago, you didn't stop, and then now you're the brand ambassador of this major event. Like, this, that's big. Like, I know about Beats and Beers. Like, that, that's a huge event. Okay, so now you got that coming up. You're the brand ambassador for these people, and, and that just speaks to um, your consistency and your work ethic. But now tell me, what do you have going on as far as your music? Are you in the studio? Because, like, I, I mean, I know you popping off with something. Oh, yeah. Um, a couple weeks ago, well, it wasn't a couple weeks ago. I say about a month ago. I did a distribution deal with Empire. Um, Empire is, like, one of the biggest independent distributors in the world. And um, I gave them about 100, 120 song catalog. Okay. So um, they distributed, they distributed my songs now. So I got my next project, I'm working on that right now, it's called Made Man. Okay. That's why I'm actually in Savannah, because I'm with Entrell Bowers. He's my okay. main engineer, and okay. I'm finishing out that project. Okay, and that's T-Row Entertainment. Yeah. Okay, okay, that's what's yeah. up. So um, I got that done, and then I also have a project called Trill, Recognized Trill. And I that's saw it. a little sneak peek yeah. of that. Yeah. Now I'm going crazy. Like I was like, yeah. yeah. That's done. And that's actually with one of my little partners from down here. His okay. name is Killer Qua. And okay. I feel like he underrated. And I got okay. a platform. So I was like, man, I'm going to make sure everybody find out about you that know me. You know what I'm saying? Just on some big homie, little homie type jump, like exactly. how big did me. Mentor. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So I got that project, and then I got Southern Players Volume 2 um, in collaboration with my homie up here on that sweet too. I love so it. that's all the stuff. We actually just wrapped that album up about um, two or three weeks ago. Two or three weeks ago, you wrapped up that album. Now, please tell me, what is it that you have going on as far as you got the beats and beers that's going to be happening then you got your uh, ep that's about to drop you're still working on your music like oh um i I got added to the coalition djs next to blow stage in atlanta that's going to be at uh stankoni studios big boy studio you know see you're doing too much now see now you sound like kevin hart like now i need to give you like 10 minutes for you to pull out a piece of paper and be like y'all got time y'all got time all right i'm I'm doing this i'm doing that i love it but that's how you got to do it You, you you're still as hungry today as you were back in college. Yeah. And that's what it's about. Keep working. Keep grinding. You know what I mean? I love your persistency. Um, I love your humbleness. Um, I love your business man. Because at the end of the day, it's all business. It's all business. Everybody out here trying to eat, you know. And at the end of the day, everybody trying to be heard. So the fact that, you know, you don't take it personal and you keep picking up and you keep moving, that says a lot about your character of person. And that's something that I think young people need to see. Whether you're in the music industry or whether you just want to be an entrepreneur who's selling, you know, whatever. Like, you need to make sure that you're consistent, you're persistent about what it is that you want to do. Pop up on people. Put your stuff out there. Like, put your foot, like, in this day and age of technology, there's no reason why somebody should not know about what you're doing. Exactly. 
Exactly, that's true. But once I noticed how many people was following me, like really following me, because you could have a lot of followers and they really not care what you got going on. Right. You know what I'm saying? But really following me and I start seeing like certain other celebrities following me and stuff like yeah. that. And I'm like, man, I could do this independent thing because the right people are going to see it. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And I got the people, the, the, the working class Joe, you know what I'm saying? They right. love my music. You know what I'm saying? It ain't just industry people. You know right. what I'm saying? So once I took myself out of me, you know right. what I'm saying, and looked at what I had going on, right. I was like, man, I'm really blessed. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And I could really do this for as long as I got to do this on exactly. my own. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. But them labels calling. I just got back from New York. Okay. I went to every label in New York. Everybody wanted to hear my new music. I was playing all my new stuff over there. Right. And I could have left there with a deal, but I was like, if they interested now, I'm going to go ahead and drop. I'm going to keep touring. And then I see what's going on like summertime or next fall. Exactly. Just so I could be able to write the number on my check. Exactly. Instead of them sliding me a check with a number exactly. devaluing me. Exactly. You know exactly. Like you said, you value yourself. You know what I mean? You value yourself, you don't value their wealth. And that's important to value yourself. Because the first time that you value their wealth, that means that they're going to be able to lowball you. Yeah. You know? So yeah. I appreciate, uh, you know, your gangster on that, on that situation. You know? Like, yeah. man, stay independent as long as you can. And, you know, when you get ready to make that move, you'll know. Don't let nobody push you into that. You know? And you're not because you're just not that type of cat. Like, you're a leader. You're not a follower. So, yeah. listen, it was great rapping with you. Um, I, I got one more. You got one more? What you? Look, Come on, Kevin. Look, what you doing? Look, look, look. I gotta make sure I say this. Backwoods is sponsoring a concert for me. Like they saw me um, perform at Apache in Atlanta. Okay. And they asked could they do a concert for me in Atlanta, but I was like, nah, y'all gotta do that in Savannah. So what? Yeah. So what happened was they was like, okay, do you think you would have a full lineup of dope rappers in in Savannah? And I was like, yeah. So they was like, all right, let's see how it goes. So I put up a post. Okay. I was like, yeah, anybody wanna open for me in Savannah? It's a backwood sponsor concert. We're about to do it real big. That post got 3,200 comments. 3,200. Yeah. That's bananas. So after that happened, Vic Backwoods hit me and was like, yo, Savannah got a lot of dope artists. Because they was going and, and looking, looking at people these paid up. pages, yeah. Exactly. So I got that concert coming up. That's going to be in March. Okay. I don't know if I'm going to do it the week before Southbound or the week after. Okay. But um, I'm headlining. Caution and Mac Mall, they headlining. They from West Savannah. Right. And I got uh, Heartbreak, he headlining. Other acts, Killer Quad, Captain Ken, Top Boy Mari, AJ, and Max Styles. And then we also looking for 10 more people. So okay. you can register on the website, okay. www.backwoodselected.com. Okay. And then they're going to review your music and they'll get back to you. That's but that's going to be like something, a big platform in the city. Like everybody talking about it. Exactly. They got 3,200 comments under 3,200 comments. You know what I'm I mean, it's a little, doing a little something, something. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Well, listen, man, it's all about putting other people on. You know, somebody helped you, you know, along the way. And the fact that you're giving back and you're reaching back into your community and, and you're helping these people get on, that's amazing. And that speaks volumes. And that's the reason why you're going to go further and further. Like, every time I see you, like, you just, you steady building, you steady climbing. And I'm just so proud of you because I remember meeting you a couple of years ago and you was like, I was trying to get on, you know what I'm saying? I'm doing my thing. And then to follow you and kind of see where you're at, your progression is crazy because you're consistent and persistent. So, congratulations on everything that you got going on. I know you got some more stuff coming up. In March, you make show. I'm up in that thing just so that I can support you. And um, I just appreciate everything that you've done for the city. And uh, just coming on the show, man, and, and hanging out with Big Sis. I appreciate that. <laughs> That's what's well, up. I'm always check in with you. I, I, know. I hit you every time I come home. I know. Every time you come home, you always hit me like, hey, I'm here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just because I know. You never know what, I, what, what you might fall into. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Exactly. You never know. And like you said, it's about trying to put other people on and trying to help and support. And you do that. And that's what I love about you. But, man, we can sit here and rap all day. Y'all, we're going to go ahead and cut this day short. Um, I appreciate you coming out. Y'all, make sure y'all check out. This is going to be the final episode of season one of Flavor TV. So, 
y'all make sure that y'all go and check my boy out. Uh, who is Clay James on IG? It's and on uh, it's on it's on everything. Who yeah. is Clay James? So make sure you yeah. follow him, check him out. And as far as Flavor TV goes, y'all next season is gonna be bananas with uh, amazing venues, and also we gonna be doing some crazy stuff next season. We already trying to get this stuff together, <laughs> okay? But appreciate you all for uh, taking the time out to be a part of Flavor TV. And don't forget, follow me on Flavor TV uh, on YouTube, and also you can follow me on Instagram at Lady Mahogany Nine One Two. You already know what it is, y'all. Flavor TV, we out. Thank you, thank you. Ha, you're far too kind. Can I get a